Senator David Shoebridge, we are seeing a situation at the moment for Julian Assange where there have been some US assurances that make it clear that according to long established law in the United States, foreign nationals acting abroad do not have any constitutional rights. Julian Assange would be barred from constitutional protection, specifically of the First Amendment, which judges have admitted is central to his defence, purely on grounds of nationality. That breaks Article 10 of the European Convention on Human Rights. And in my view, it also violates Section 81 of the Domestic Extradition Act. Is there anything that the Australian government can now do because he's our citizen? He's not a citizen of the United States and he is going to be, as the judges said, potentially very prejudiced in any kind of trial in the United States. Well, I think one of the key principles underlying extradition, at least from countries like the United Kingdom and Australia, has been that anyone extradited will at least get equal treatment before the laws of the court to which they're being extradited. That you think would be a a kind of fundamental underpinning, that you're not going to be prejudiced in the criminal proceedings because you're a foreigner. That basic equal treatment principle underpins many countries' extradition processes. And so the UK courts quite reasonably asked the US administration to provide basic assurances that, first of all, Julian Assange would not face the death penalty because that's another core underpinning principle in the UK's extradition laws, like Australia's. And then secondly, sought an assurance that Julian Assange would be granted First Amendment rights, their free speech rights under the US Constitution. The US gave a some kind of assurance on the death penalty. Whether you believe that assurance or not, given the US past history is another matter, but they did purport to give an assurance on not seeking the death penalty for Julian Assange. But on the second point, they gave what lawyers would normally call a mendacious assurance, well, basically a deceitful purported assurance, that on the First Amendment rights, that the US assurance, if you could call it that, was that There was nothing to prevent Julian Assange from seeking to get First Amendment protections if he's prosecuted in the United States, and they said that quite loudly. And what they didn't say, and but it screams at you from the US response, what they didn't say is that, yes, sure, Julian Assange can seek to have First Amendment rights, you know, the right to free speech, but the US government, consistent with longstanding position, will viciously oppose that right and do everything they possibly can to prevent him having First Amendment rights in every possible way, in every argument, in every US court. Now, if that's an assurance that the UK courts are willing to accept, I think that calls into question the independence of any kind of judicial review of Julian Assange's extradition. But it also points to a deeper deceitfulness in the US government's response. And our government has been silent about it. Not a whisper, not a public whisper from our prime minister, from our foreign minister, nothing from our ambassador in the United States. They should be yelling from the rooftops that this is not an assurance that in any way protects an Australian citizen like Julian Assange. It's not just Julian Assange who would be at risk. It would be any foreign national who acted abroad. So that's why I was asking what should Australia be doing? What is in their power to, I mean, is it just our leverage as an important ally where we can keep insisting? Well, if Australia is a valued friend of the United States, and if all of the talk about being partners is to have any meaning, well, then surely the calls from the Australian public, which somewhat reluctantly the Albanese government has backed in at least tepidly, surely the calls from the Australian public to have Julian freed and to drop the prosecution should carry some weight. And to be quite frank, if a friend is not willing to listen in those circumstances, then I think it should question whether or not this is a genuinely two-way friendship with the United States. And, And if they won't listen to a polite call, well, then Australia should place some actual diplomatic or military assets on the table. And we should say to the United States, well, actually, 
we're not entirely sure about the ongoing deployment of US Marines in Darwin, or we're reconsidering the expansion of Tyndall for B-52. So we're only going to allow it if you give us a rock-solid guarantee that they won't be nuclear-armed, at least some kind of diplomatic asset that we should put on the table. We should be doing all of that anyhow in our own national interest, but at least some kind of diplomatic asset should be put on the table to put some pressure on Washington so that Julian can come home. Well, you know, this is basically a matter of law. We shouldn't have to ask for favours. But given the situation, that this has been a political trial right from the very beginning, and there have been some outrageous decisions made for the United States, we should remember, no, that Britain is also a close ally of ours and that we should just say to them, look, the law must be applied. It is very plain in US law that Julian Assange would not have a fair trial. So just send it to the European court because this is an Article 10 matter and shouldn't this court, of course this court should decide upon whether these circumstances do break that article of the convention. Would well, you agree I mean, with that? I think every legal avenue should be explored in the face of an intransigent US administration that wants to jail Julian Assange for being a journalist. I think every possible legal avenue should be explored. But our government should also reject the very idea that US domestic legislation can criminalise anyone anywhere on the planet, regardless of their connections to the United States, if they disclose the secrets of the US military and the secrets of the US government, including in exposing war crimes in Iraq with material like the collateral murder video. If that is to become a crime, to just tell the truth about US war crimes, and if that's gonna become a crime, if it's done by any citizen anywhere on the planet, regardless of their connections with the United States, well, we live in a much more dangerous planet if that's gonna be allowed to be the status quo. And, I, you know, that kind of fundamental statement from our government has been missing from day one. David Shoebridge, thank you very much. I'll let you go now. Thanks, Kate. Um, Thanks, I do have to run. I'm sorry. So um, good speaking, as always. Um, if you can solve the foreign affairs dilemma, then let me know, Alison. I do think there's more prominence to the debate now than there was two years ago or so. I think it's that, that's my observation. I don't know what you think, Alison. I mean, the threat's bigger, but that's probably partly why. But I think there's, there are more critical voices in the public domain. Yeah. Yeah, right. and there's the who said, we won't be fooled again. <laughs> Thanks again, David. Right. See you guys. I really Bye. appreciate it. Yeah, you too. Cheers. Bye, David. Alison, can I throw that question to you as well about Julian Assange's current situation? Oh, sure. The, the point that David made is the main one. That is, if Australia now says, and that is the leaders of both major parties now say that enough is enough and that Julian should be released, then it's time for them to do something meaningful about it. And as far as we can make out, they haven't done that. They haven't done it in London, they haven't done it in Washington, or if they have, it hasn't worked. And as he said, if it hasn't worked, then what sorts of allies and friends are these? And the only way for Australia to get justice for Julian and get him out of there is to be a little bit tougher. We don't have much experience in being tough, but it's not only Julian, it's AUKUS, it's the Alliance, it's everything. And Australia, in its own interests and his, should toughen up now, in my view. Yes, well, I mean, Julian is sort of part and parcel of all this. You know, as a journalist, not only has he had this philosophy and drive to ensure accuracy in the historical record, But one of the things that drew me personally as a pacifist, I suppose, uh, not not in every condition, but is that WikiLeaks had a distinctly anti-war bent about it. And it just seemed 
in both senses to make very good sense. Exactly. So, <laughs> exactly. Thanks, Kathy. That was great. Thank you very much. It was an Many excellent thanks. discussion.